the hour of Genesis 26, 12. And Isaac planted a seed in the ground, and that year reaped a hundredfold harvest. The Lord says, sow into intimacy with me, and you will reap a mighty harvest of joy. Now is the season of multiplication. Now is the season of restoration. Now is the season of reconciliation. Watch what I'm about to do in your families. Watch what I'm about to do in your marriage. Watch what I'm about to do in your relationships. The Lord says this is the season of restoration and healing. Take the opportunities that I give you. Go through the doors that I open. When I put that person in front of you, forgive and let my healing flow. The Lord says, I'm about to put my people in uncomfortable situations. Be led by my spirit and watch the oil flow. The Lord says, things happen when you're willing to be uncomfortable. Are you willing to be uncomfortable for me? Today my church wants to be comfortable. She wants to be comforted. She wants my hand of blessing. Where is my bride who will seek my face? Where is my bride who will suffer with me? Where is my bride who will pour out her life like a drink offering for my sake? I decree and declare she is here, saith the Lord. I decree and declare she is here, saith the Lord. My bride become, my bride become, my bride become everything I created you to be. My bride now is the hour of becoming. Stop mourning over the past. Stop mourning over the past. Stop going to the table of feasting on the past. It is now time, says the Lord. I want to set my bride free from bondage to the past and grieving over what, what, what once was. The Lord says, the earth, the world says, don't cry over spilt milk. I say, forget the past. Let go of what lies behind you, for I'm doing a new thing. My fragrance is going forth throughout the earth. My glory is being poured out. Will you be the fragrance of Christ? Will you be the fragrance of Christ amongst the dying and the lost? Will you release my glory light wherever I send you? Now is not the time to hide. Now is not the time to grieve and mourn over the past. Now is the time to rise up in intimacy and walk as the head and not the tail. Bride become, bride become, bride become everything that I created you to be. Now is the hour to become, says the Lord. Now is the hour to become. My blood has washed away your past, and you're a new creation. This day I break the chains, and I free you from your past, says the Lord. And the Lord says, now is the time to spread the eagle's wings that I've given you. Oh, the Holy Spirit has tried to crimp, or the enemy has tried to crimp them and hold them back, but the Holy Spirit is saying, rise up on the wings of the eagle. The Lord is saying, now is the time to become. Now is the time to become. Now is the time to become everything I created you to be. I am removing the bondages and the blockages, but you must soar in the realm of the Spirit. I am removing the things that are holding you back and keeping you chained down it is your responsibility to run, the Lord says, and become everything I created you to be. I'm doing my part. Now take me at your word. Take me at my word and become everything that I created you to be. Now is the time. Now is the hour. Now is the day. The Lord says, I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. The Spirit of God is saying, you don't have time to say next year. 
You don't have time to say five years from now. You don't, you don't have time to say when I'm 30, 40, 50, 60. The Lord says, now is the time. The Lord said, did not at my appointed time the door of the ark close? I'm the God of the appointed time, he says. I open up doors and I close doors. The Lord says things are happening more quickly. When the doors open, you must go through them quickly, led by my Holy Spirit, for soon they will close. Now is the time. Now is the hour. Now is the season, says the Lord. Become, become, become everything I created you to be. It's already written in the books of heaven. Become everything I've written about you. Take me at my word. Step out in faith. Believe and you will see, the Lord says. Now is the time. Now is the hour. Now is the day. So Holy Spirit, I just ask in humility right now that you would release in this house and anointing to lay hold of the open doors that you're opening. Holy Spirit, I ask for an anointing to go through the open doors. Lord, I ask that you would remove all hesitation from this house. And may we be a people that walk in the spirit of Issachar, that understand the times and the seasons and what we are to do. Lord, I ask that we will no longer be hesitant because of mistakes that we've made in the past. Lord, I ask rather for an anointing to seize the day. Lord, an anointing to go through the door. Lord, an anointing to understand the times and the seasons. And Lord, not just to know, but to go. Lord, not just to know, but to go. Lord, I ask you to touch every ear in this place. Give us ears that hear. Lord, touch every eye in this place. Give us eyes that see. Lord, touch every mouth, every voice in this place. Lord, raise up your prophetic voices at the end of the age. Lord Jesus, in your precious name, I call forth the apostles. I call forth the prophets. I call forth the evangelists. I call forth, oh, hallelujah, the preachers. I call forth the teachers. I call forth those that walk in gifts of healing. I call forth those that walk in the anointing of deliverance. I call forth the revivalists. I call forth the financiers. Come forth in the name of Jesus. And be everything the Lord has created you to be. Thank you, Lord. 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 The Lord just showed me a Polaroid. And it was of someone standing still. But they heard the calling of the Lord and they took a large step forward. And as they stepped forward, it was like an image of them was still standing where they just walked away from. But as they moved forward, a new creation came forth. A new person filled with the glory light of God moved forth out of the shadow of what once was. And I just believe that's a picture of what God's about to do. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen.
am going to pray. <laughs> um, and Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for the honor and the privilege it is to pray. And Lord God, I just ask that you, God, I really just need you to speak. And I really, Lord, just need you to hold this microphone. And take this time. So earlier, or a few minutes ago, when that word was being released, I saw a robe like the back end of it kind of sweep over the room. And it reminded me of the story that we heard about last week about the woman who pressed through the crowd and reached out and grabbed the hem of his garment. We get a lot of word that's released here as a whole body. And I just get the sense that in this moment, we're being asked as individuals to reach out and grab the hem of his garment. And to receive the word for ourselves. because you're not too young and you're not too old and you haven't missed your window or your time. And I think our heart's desire as a church and as a whole is to move forward into what God has called us to be as a whole, but to be a part of a whole we have to make a decision as an individual. And so I'm not going to speak for anybody else right now in this moment, but Lord Jesus, right now I reach out and I take hold of the hem of your garment, Lord God. And in faith, I receive every promise and every word that you've spoken over me as an individual. And as I come into agreement with you, Lord God, as an individual, I move forward the group as a whole. We love you so much, God. I love you so much, Lord. And I give you all honor, all glory, and all praise for what you're doing right now, what you have been doing, and truly, Heavenly Father, just for who you are. Lord God, your presence is so precious to us. You are so precious to us. Thank you, God, for this encounter with you. 
Thank you for yet again coming before us and so graciously offering us an encounter and a moment with you. We love you and we say yes to you, Lord. Prepare our hearts, God. Prepare our minds for the, the words that you have for us today. And let the words that you've already spoken take root. God, may the message that comes forth this morning, may those seeds fall on good soil and good ground that the enemy can't come by and snatch up and take away. We cover the rest of this time in your blood, Lord Jesus. We love you and we thank you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. This house is taking a step forward today. How many are hearing this in the Lord? This house is taking a step forward today. So I'd like for everybody to do this. Just stand for a moment. And I know that uh, you may not have a whole lot of room in front of you right now. But what I'm going to ask us to do in a second is in faith, just take a step forward. Even if you don't have a ton of room and some are coming in the aisle, that's awesome. That works too. Hallelujah. But I believe that we can't just be hearers of the word. We have to be doers also. And wow, God has been speaking so powerfully, prophetically already today. And I was watching the Lord just give people downloads during praise and worship. So Holy Spirit's been speaking all day long. But we want to now take a step of faith in the realm of the Spirit. This is not a, a physical step as much as it's a supernatural step. And I hear the Lord saying that there's people in this room that are called to ministry. Everyone is called to ministry. We all have the same first ministry, and that's ministry to Jesus. But how many know out of that ministry to our first love, our bridegroom Jesus, comes other ministry that he's called us to. We minister to the Lord and then we minister to his people. And the Lord this room has a ministry and I'm beginning to call people to step forward into deeper intimacy with me. And through that, they're going to come forth immersed in my oil and they're going to minister to people in my name. And it's going to be a ministry that's going to be an outpouring of the greatest outpouring of Joel chapter two the earth has ever seen. The Lord said, we're coming into the time now where I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I will pour out my spirit on my servants, saith the Lord. And I will give signs in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. And the moon will be turned to blood before the great and coming, terrible coming day of the Lord. And the Lord says, and everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Sam, as you were speaking what you were seeing and as you were praying, I saw you taking a step forward in the realm of the Spirit. And because you took that step forward in the realm of the Spirit, that was a forerunner step that you just took. I saw your prophetic ministry beginning to flow. Now you've written things down in your prophetic journal. You shared a few words. But today I saw your prophetic ministry being birthed. And the Lord told me, call her out of her comfort zone and bring her up because I want to break the jar so the oil can begin to flow. Oh. And the Lord says, all over the sanctuary, just like Mary of Bethany who burst into the room where I was. And she had to allow something precious to her to be broken so the precious nard could flow. The Lord said, this day I want to break you free from everything that's held you back so that the oil of the ministry to me and then to my people that I put within you before you were ever born can now come forth. The Lord says, now is the time. The Lord says, now is the time. The Lord says, now is the time. 
I hear the Lord saying for you guys, I hear the Lord saying, I'm calling you to take a step forward. He says, you even being here today is a step forward. He said, I'm calling you to take a step forward. And the Lord says, if you will take a step forward, he's going to take a step forward. Because the Lord says, I've got a call to ministry on his life. The Lord says, I'm going to use this young man to preach the gospel. I see this young man in front of very large groups preaching the gospel and releasing the word of the Lord. The Lord says, he is the fruit. But the Lord says, he cannot go where you do not blaze the trail. The Lord says, your ceiling will be his floor. So you've got to press forward, press forward, press forward, press forward, press forward, press forward. The Lord says, right now you're seeking and you're searching. The Lord says, I'm showing you and I'm revealing things to you even this day. The Lord says, the Lord says, don't doubt some things that I've been speaking to you this morning. He said, I've been speaking to you. He says, don't doubt what I'm speaking to you this morning. He says, come into agreement on what I'm speaking and watch what I'm going to do because I'm breaking you away from your past today, God says. I'm taking you out of a place and I'm bringing you to a new place. And the Lord says, that's multiple places, by the way. But the Lord says, I am taking you out of a place and I'm putting you in a new, into a new place. I'm taking you out of an old season and I'm bringing you into a new season. You asked me for the release. I'm telling you this day, the Lord says, I'm releasing you. I'm releasing you. I'm releasing you now into the new place and the new things that I have for you, the Lord says. The Lord says, also, as you step into the new season, I'm going to bless your marriage like never before. He says, I'm going to bless this relationship like never before. He says, you've been asking for more spiritual oneness. The Lord says, you can lift your hands together and worship me, but there's things in your relationship that aren't in the place where I want them to be and you want them to be. I'm going to bring them into that place, God says. And I'm going to bring you into unity, Amos 3.3. 3. How can two walk together unless they agree? The Lord says, come into agreement with me, and then I'll bring you into agreement with each other like never before. And the Lord says, I'm going to move, remove the roadblocks and the issues and the things that you haven't been able to fight through. You've been crying out to me. You've been saying, God, you're an awesome God, and I've been seeing you work in other people's lives and in their marriage. What about ours? What about me? God says, this day I want you to know I've heard your prayer. And God says, I am releasing healing over you. I hear the Lord say, whoo, Malachi chapter 4, I'm rising up over your household with healing in my wings, beams, and rays. And I, and you are going to release, like, you're going to leap like calves released from the stall. The Lord says, this day I release the oil of freedom over you. This day I release my anointing over you. This day I prepare you for something mighty. And the Lord says, do not doubt that I put you together. He says, what I have put together, let nobody pull asunder. And the Lord says, multicultural, multicultural, multicultural. I brought you together because I have a multicultural ministry I'm going to birth through this young man. The Lord said he is going to have a multicultural ministry. Hallelujah. He's going to be a man without limitation, and I'm going to use him to build a church without walls. The Lord says, I put treasure in this vessel of clay, and I'm going to bring it forth. But he says, Mom and Dad, for it to happen, you've got to move forward together. You've got to move forward together. You've got to move forward together. The Lord says, this day I'm releasing you from some things. Now move forward and step into the new season that I have for you. And Lord Jesus, I just ask for this young man that you would give him a double dose of what you've given me. Lord, that Elijah to Elisha would now go forth and that you would give this young man a double dose of the anointing that you've given me. Lord, I see the nations in him. I see the nations in him. I see the nations in him. Lord, I see a ministry to Hispanic people. But Lord, I see a multicultural ministry at the same time. I see the nations within this young man. I see revival in your belly. I see revival in your belly. And the child shall lead them. I see revival in your belly. Young man, when I was about your age and I was at my dad's church, 
uh, an evangelist, a traveling evangelist was speaking, and he came up to me in about this row in that church, and he looked at me and he said, I see the hand of God upon your life. And he said, God's going to use you in a mighty way. Young man, I say the same thing to you this day at about the same age I was when that word was spoken over me. I see the hand of God on your life. I see the light of God on your life. If you will say yes to Jesus, he's going to use you in ways that are beyond what your eye has seen, ears heard, nor mind imagined. The Lord says, if you will say yes to me this day, I'm going to use your life in a mighty, mighty way. You say yes to the Lord today? Okay. Then put your hands up, if you will, young man. And just say, Lord Jesus, I say yes to you. Fill me with an apostolic anointing to go to the nations for you. I will go. Here I am, Lord. Send me and fill me with the spirit of the Lord, with the spirit of wisdom the spirit of revelation, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. For it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Now breathe in deep, young man. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. Now the Lord says, step out in faith on that word in the new season I've called you to and trust me. The Lord says, as you take a step, he'll take two or three. The Lord says, but your steps are crucial. I've ordained your steps. I've ordained your steps. I've ordained your steps. I also hear the Lord saying this morning, you've sat from the chair, from the pew, and you've watched some very anointed people. The Lord says, my anointing is upon you also. The Lord says, you see them here and you see yourself here. The Lord says, is not my anointing upon you? Is not my call upon your life? Begin to see yourself as I see you. Because I've called you to minister. I've called you to release my glory. I've called you. I see a little boy, and I hear God saying, I'm going to heal that little boy. And I'm going to grow that little boy up into this man's body. Because the Lord says, you feel like there's a little boy inside of you stuck at some things that went on in your childhood. And I hear God say, I'm going to touch that little boy, and I'm going to grow him into that man's body so that you don't feel like a little boy instead of a man's body, inside of a man's body any longer. He said, I'm going to heal, I'm going to restore, I'm going to renew, I'm going to deliver, I'm going to use you for my glory. And he says, the enemy has tried to hold you down from the point of birth. But the Lord says, I've called you to be a prophet to the nations. I've called you to carry my word to the nations. I have called you. Do not think it strange. I chose you before I ever put you in your mother's womb. And he says, I'm the God who takes someone who comes out of very difficult circumstances and I make them a miracle. And the Lord says, you will be a walking, talking, living, breathing miracle for me, God says. I see breakthrough all over you, man of God. I see breakthrough all over you. And I see a vessel that contains the glory of the Lord. God says, I'm going to begin to move. 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 And by the way, the Lord says he loves the way that you worship him, woman of God. He loves your worship language. It is mighty. And in the realm of the spirit, your worship language is like a lion. It's like a lion before the Lord. It's beautiful here on earth, but before the Lord, it's, it's mighty. And the Lord says, the enemy tries to suppress your worship because your worship changes the atmosphere and breaks things open. And the Lord says, the day is going to come as you guys are together 
that you're going to understand the giftings that God has put in you and how they're going to be used and how you guys are going to fit together like hand in love. Things that have been difficult will become easy in the spirit, God says. The things that have been difficult will become easy in the realm of the spirit. God says, I'm bringing you into a season of change, of training, of being poured into, of being prepared, and then I'm going to release you forth into a mighty ministry, the Lord is saying. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. So I'd like the three of you, just put, put your hands together if you would. Who, hallelujah. Where's Josiah? Josiah, come over, please. And Sam. Who, thank you, Lord. Who, thank you, Jesus. And Sister Jean. Please, thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, right now, agreement, this body recognizes what you're doing in this family. Lord, I don't think I've ever met them before, but I feel like I know them in the Spirit. And Lord Jesus, right now as a body, we recognize what you're doing. And Lord Jesus, we witness it. Everything is established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Lord, there's an entire body witnessing what you're about to do in this family. Lord Jesus, right now in your name, I decree, I decree and declare they're stepping forward. They are stepping forward. And Lord Jesus, I declare now the old season is behind them and the new season is all around them and in front of them. Lord Jesus, right now I bless this marriage. Lord Jesus, I come against every word curse that's been spoken against this marriage. Lord, you're saying it hasn't been understood. It's been criticized even within the family. Lord, all kinds of things have happened. I hear the Lord saying, man of God, that as you guys begin to move in what God has for you, your family's really understand, but then they're going to understand. Your family's not going to understand, but then they're going to understand. So, Lord Jesus, now as a body, we stand in for these three, and we break every word curse that's been spoken against this marriage. Break in the name of Jesus! And Lord Jesus, right now, we free this marriage to flourish. Lord Jesus, bring them from a restricted place to a spacious place. Lord, bring them out of hindrance and into joy. And Lord, I ask that you will release them to fully engage and enjoy this marriage the way that you meant it to be, Lord. And Lord, this you are saying this marriage is multicultural because it's a reflection of the ministry that's going to come forth out of this family. Lord Jesus, I ask right now that you would take all limitations this couple. Lord, I ask that you would take all limitation off this young man. And Lord Jesus, I ask that this will be a day that they'll look back on and they'll realize you changed everything this day. Lord, they came to this church in faith today. Lord, you met them at the place of faith. And God, now you're releasing healing like you did for the Syrophoenician woman who is crying out for healing, Lord. Lord, I thank you this day. You're bringing life and health and joy to this family. So Lord, I ask right now, that every blessing of the Hebrew year 5783 that you would pour out upon them. Restoration, renewal, recompense. Lord, redeem, restore, heal, rebuild. And Lord, restore back to this family what the enemy has stolen and the locusts and cankerworm have eaten. So Lord Jesus, right now as a body, we bless this family. Lord, pour out over them the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's my wife's birthday. And uh, she she got me in a church. I haven't been in church in a long time. And I stepped outside and I was talking to Ben. I was smoking a cigarette. I felt, like you said, a little boy. And uh, I didn't feel like I belonged because this is a place where the Lord is. I know it. I, I've been to different churches I visited. And a lot of the things you're saying is exactly from him. It's exactly from him. I was just telling Ben that I have an anointing and I've been running from it I've been running from it and I haven't preached his name for two weeks because <laughs> I've been ashamed of how I've lived and I want to change I just 
how? I was just telling them that, you know, I don't know how to change. Yesterday was our 22nd year anniversary, and I stopped wearing my ring a long time ago. And I don't want to live that way anymore. <laughs> you're wonderful, and you're my soulmate. And everything he said about Emmanuel is true. Man of God, just pray with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, in this moment, I completely give. You can through the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray this in faith with me. He's going to help you. Just say, Lord Jesus, in this moment, I give you everything. I don't understand how it's going to happen, but I trust you. You are the Son of God. You died for me. You rose again for me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take over every area of my life. I give it back to you. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire and help me become the man of God, the husband, the dad, the minister that you called me to be. I need you, Jesus. I need your Holy Spirit. I surrender to you, Holy Spirit. Teach me, lead me, show me. In Jesus' name, amen. you guys we're so glad you're here today hallelujah yes amen and only you guys can come into agreement on where and how you feel like God is leading you but I'm gonna say this I feel a leading today and I'm gonna leave it at that I think God is leading so just go with the leading of the Lord you can't go wrong hallelujah amen thank you Lord let's give the Lord a hand this morning Josiah, come here, please. How many love this guy? Okay, everybody stand up, please. If you have to, push the chair in front of you forward just a tiny bit. Because we're going to move forward together. Now, we just saw a family move forward. Now it's time for everybody in this place to move forward. And you're not moving forward because I'm saying you need to take a step forward. I want you to do this in faith. I want you to do this in belief. I want you to do this out of hunger and desperation for Jesus. I want you to do this because you feel in this very moment that Jesus is doing something. Anybody feel that Jesus is doing something in this moment? So in faith, we're going to meet him there. Okay. Holly, would you come up, please? How many love my amazing wife? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, guys, on the step three, we're going to take a step forward. It's a physical step, but the Lord says it's a supernatural step, more than it is physical. So, Lord Jesus, you said today it's time to move forward. You said today it's time to take steps of faith. You said it's time today to come out of the old season and into the new. So now, at a step of faith in the natural realm, may a large leap of faith be taken by us, Lord, as a body, individuals, families, Lord Jesus, your people, in the invisible realm. So now we step forward. One, two, three, step! Hallelujah! Whew. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. 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 Hey! Jesus. Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rabba Shandabake. 
Brother Jim, if you want to prepare yourself, I hear the Lord saying something for Josiah this morning. Josiah, I hear the Lord saying to you today, I'm putting things in place. Step into them. I hear the Lord say, I'm setting things in motion. Go with me. I hear the Lord say, Josiah, do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. I am with you, says the Lord. I am with you. The Lord says, I ordain this to be a season of intimacy. I ordain this to be a season of moving forward. I ordain this not as a season of wandering or wondering, but as a season of seeking and pursuing. And the Lord says, step forward in me today and watch what I'm going to do. The Lord showed me something that he wouldn't let me release about 20 minutes ago. And it was this, Josiah, when Sam was up here prophesying and when Sam was up here praying, I saw the two of you ministering together. I saw you ministering in the word and in power, and I saw her ministering in the prophetic. And I saw you guys as a couple put together by God. I saw the beginnings of the flow of your ministry. Now, I'm going to give you guys more opportunities in this house as the Holy Spirit leads. Step into what God is doing. Step into what God is doing. Josiah, the Lord says to you today, stop looking at yourself through the past. Stop looking at yourself through the lens of the things that have happened. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Forget about the past. Let go of what lies behind. Are you not my anointed? Are you not called by me? Do I not desire to use you to touch the lives of thousands upon thousands upon thousands? Josiah, the Lord is saying, now is the time. Step in, step in, step in. Now, church, I'm going to be asking this young man to start spending time in the pulpit in this house. How many are in agreement with that? Because he's a young pastor that's being raised up in this house. But he's going to go beyond the pastoral anointing. This is an apostolic house. He's walking, he's beginning to walk in the realm of the apostolic. He's stepping out in preaching as part of a reflection of that. But I'm going to ask this young man to be in the pulpit at least once a quarter, if not more. Because I believe that God is beginning to do something mighty in his life. How many witness that? And this is part of the role of this house, is to raise up people in the fivefold. How many are hearing this? That's part of it. And God says this day as a body, we've taken a step forward. And we're beginning to move in the calling of the Lord that he has upon this house. How many receive that in the Lord? We're to be a people without limitation, an apostolic house that God is using to build a church without walls. How many receive that? And by the way, every one of you are a part of this. Every one of you are a part of this. Every one of you are a part of this. And Josiah, I saw you and Sam together. I also saw you and I like this, moving together in the things of the Lord. Take that to the Holy Ghost. See where the Lord takes that. But I'm just sensing a move of God. Hallelujah. Woo! As Jim is making his way up to the pulpit this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory. This is a beautiful day in the Lord. And look at all the people that are in the house today. Hallelujah. Guys, next week, does anybody remember Emmanuel? Emmanuel was the young lady that uh, sang a song for us a few weeks back. She grew up on the mission field in Cameroon, Africa. Okay, anybody remember Emmanuel? Emmanuel is going to be here next week, and she's going to lead the entire praise and worship session. And it's going to be just a different, beautiful day in the Lord. And she, um, her mom's going to be here also, and she's an anointed woman of God.
And they're going to be here ministering in music together. Do not miss what God's going to do next week. You don't want to miss it any more than you want to miss what's going on right now. God says we're coming into a new season as a body where we aren't going to know what he's going to do on any given Sunday. I mean, as we continue to give the Holy Spirit freedom, it's going to be just amazing and incredible and so joyous to watch what he's doing. The Lord's been giving us a word as a body. He's saying, return to your first love. Now, you may say, but, but wait a minute, we love the Lord. How many know that's something that we need to check ourselves on every day? Is Jesus my first love? Amen? And the Lord says he doesn't want us to dwell in the church of, of, uh, of, May, or of Ephesus. The church of Ephesus in Revelation 2, how many know they were doing all the right things? They had the look. They had the appearance. But what did the Lord say? I have this against you. You've forsaken your first love. But he didn't say to them, now it's hopeless and it's helpless and you're in big trouble. What he said to them was this. He said, return to me. So I want to encourage us, encourage us as a body as, because God says this house is about to grow. Not only in the power of the Holy Spirit, but also in number. The Lord is saying he's going to give us our own buildings. He said, things are about to happen. The Lord says, hold tight to the hem of my garment in the midst of all of it. I am your first love. So let's go from, from Ephesus to Emmaus, the place of the hot springs. Amen? So as, uh, as Jim heads towards the pulpit this morning, Tuesday night in, uh, in our guys and ladies group, a combined group, it was a very unique night. And I wasn't here Friday night, but I heard intercession was unique and amazing also. Praise God on Friday night. But God released a word through Rob. How many love Brother Rob? Amen. And the Lord said this. He said, my word, my word still speaks. 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 Guys, the Lord said that eight times. And how many know that eight is the Hebrew number of new beginnings? And the Lord was saying to this body, simply yet profoundly, my word still speaks. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I just want to honor the Lord by reading that word. I want to encourage everybody, keep a prophetic notebook with you and a pen. And the things that God speaks to you, write them down that honors the Lord, but also review them and remind him in prayer that you remember the words he's spoken. Amen? Amen. Well, we have a, a very unique man of God in the pulpit today. I would downright say peculiar. How many, the, how many know the word says we're a peculiar people? Amen. And this is my brother. How many love this guy? Hallelujah. Big Jim. We love you, man. And I don't know how much you know this man, but let me kind of let you know real quick who he is. He's a man who ministers on the streets. And he goes down to the streets of Rockford, and he's got a little sound system and a microphone, and he preaches the gospel, and he ministers to people downtown. Now, by the way, he goes down to the city market, the farmer's market that goes on on Fridays, um, and he ministers down there like 3 in the afternoon to 7. And I'm telling you, if anybody feels the leading of the Lord to join him, I want to encourage you to go down, even if you just watch, but the Holy Spirit's not going to let you watch, but you can think you're going to watch. Um, go down and watch what God's doing because he's called this to be a church without walls. And we can receive everything that God is so richly pouring out on us in the four walls, but we're called to go. And we're called to take what God is releasing in this house with us into the highways and the byways. And I tell you what, guys, this man does it. And I have a lot of respect for him. Um, several months ago, he was sitting over by Caroline. And he, I think he was sitting in that same seat. 
And he looked at me before service, and he was looking at the altar, and he said, Brother, he said, where would you get those music stands from? I said, well, we ordered them. And he said, I need to get one of those for my street ministry. The Holy Spirit said to me, go up on the altar and find the nicest one on the altar and give it to him. And so I went up for service, found the nicest one on the altar, and I gave it to him. And Holy Spirit said, this house just invested in Jim's ministry. Hallelujah. You know, you may see it as a music stand. God saw it as an investment that we believe in him and in the ministry God's birthing through him. So the Lord then told me several weeks ago, he said, ask Jim to come and speak. He said, I want you to have Jim come into the pulpit and I want him to minister. So here he is in obedience to the Lord. The Lord told me to invite him and all I had to do was barely get the words out of my mouth. And he was like, all right, brother, I'm there. Amen, brother. So uh, we're just going to enjoy the word that God is going to speak through him today. How many are ready to continue to receive? Because God's been speaking all morning long. Amen. So let's just put a hand towards Brother Jim. Lord Jesus, we ask right now that you would pour out your power, your presence, your anointing upon this man. Lord, I believe that he being in this pulpit today is the beginning of something that you're doing that you're doing in his life, God. It's the beginning of you opening up doors for him to speak in churches. Lord, opening up the doors for him to go beyond the streets and even in the pulpits. Lord, and minister the word. Lord, a lot of men go from the pulpit to the streets. Lord, he's been ministering in the streets. Now you've put him in the pulpit. Lord, you said in the book of Matthew, the last will be first and the first will be last. So Holy Spirit, we ask now that as he speaks, may you speak through him. But we also ask as a church, Holy Spirit, that you would bring this man into new dimensions of ministry. We ask, Holy Spirit, that even as now he attends an apostolic house, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would pour out the apostolic anointing over him. Hey, hey, hey! Lord, pour out your apostolic anointing over his life, Lord. And Lord, even on the streets, may this man begin to move in realms and flows and reflections of the apostolic like he's never moved in before. I speak the apostolic a mantle of Jesus over you right now, brother. A double dose of what God has given me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I ask now as he moves his lips, your voice come forth from him. And Holy Spirit, we receive the word that you're speaking through our brother today. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit. The blood, the blood, the blood. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Big Jim, welcome to the pulpit, brother. We're excited. <laughs> I'm on my Jesus. I, I can hear myself. Hey. God, excuse me. Hey, yesterday, today, and I can tell you. Holy Ghost is moving in place today. And I believe he is. Today, oh my goodness, 
Can I can I pray in tongues just for a little bit? Yes, bro. I, I'm getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to this pulpit because this is not gonna hold my legs. We're all different. Every one of us. During praise and worship, I really believe this, the Lord spoke to my heart that today in this house, if you haven't been filled, baptized by the Holy Ghost, today is the day. He wants to baptize every one of his children in the Holy Ghost. But we seek the baptizer, and his name is Jesus, to baptize and there's a reason for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, and it's in my message. Lord, my wife and I prayed before I came today. And she said, Jim, don't you get wild on those people. Don't get wild now. I was like a wild man from Borneo when I was in the kingdom of darkness. But my goodness, I want to be a double man. <laughs> Jesus, wild for him, don't you? He is worthy. We are not ashamed. Uh, <laughs> oh, the lift up. Yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is. Because when we come into this house, There's many And it's so wonderful. Whoa, I like that. Hey, Josiah. You call me the shouter. I got a mic, I don't have to shout. Don't move too much. <laughs> and what's wonderful, you said it in this ear, because this ear is not as good as that one, but I tell you. Got it. Got it. So I want to get on with what the Lord is. <laughs> There's so much to say, so much I want to say, but I want to say what he wants me to say, because that's what, what counts. My wife prayed, calm down, Jim. That's hard for me to do. It's hard when you're in the presence of the Lord. But it's so wonderful. You can taste. I tasted the goodness of God this morning. You yes. can taste Him. Hallelujah. Yes. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is in this house today. And He wants to do a mighty work in every one of us. But the thing I found out in my life with the Lord from the beginning we have to yield for him to move and want. When we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we will be filled. Yes. And he wants to fill us. I'm not going to rush. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just praise you today. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your amazing grace. Yes. Who loves everybody. Yes. 
Because you are loved, the Bible says, Father. And your children knows your love. Because you first loved us, and now we're loving you. Father, you are mighty. You said in your word, Malachi 3, 6, that you change not. In Hebrews 13, 8, is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, I'm faithful by saying that because I made a promise to you in 1990s when I was preaching in the church. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, to my heart. Said, so, Jim, every time you mention Jesus, speak Hebrews 13, 8. If he did it once, he'll do it again. If he healed you once, he'll heal you again. If he protected you for something, he'll protect you again. Because he changes not. He's a loving God. A merciful God and a forgiving God. That's our daddy that loves his children so much. Father, bless your word to our hearts. For the interest of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name. <laughs> and I pray for I got <laughs> Please don't get drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I love getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. I love it. I used to be a drunken alcoholic. And I almost died. My liver was gone. Ended up in the hospital in 1983. And the doctors examined me and says, you should have been dead seven years before you walked in this door of the hospital. I wasn't going to plan on saying, we all have the testimony. And I like Mark chapter 5, that's one of my message, is that demonic man ended up being head then. <laughs> he got delivered by the Master Jesus. You and I have been delivered by the Master Jesus. We've been saved. And he changes not. I usually don't wear a hat in church. I'm 72 years old in my life. <laughs> and I was taught don't wear hats in church. That's me now. I'm just speaking. But this, this, uh, God's not against wearing hats. Uh, so don't, please don't take that in the wrong way. <laughs> God loves sinners, but he hates sin. Okay. We have to get to the, the whole counsel of God. But this hat, as Pastor Andrew was saying about the street ministry, the Lord gave this to me. Actually, he gave me this message three months ago. And it's amazing how God orchestrated, have been in the last three or four weeks, or two months, really, of things that's being spoken. It's in my message that he gave. So I know I've been listening and I'm not boasting. God wants every, all his children to hear his voice. Yes. For God is no respecter of a person of age. <laughs> and we can hear his voice. We're his sheep. My sheep hears my voice, Jesus said. And when you hear his voice, <laughs> oh, you want to dance. You want to be obedient to what he has to say. Sometimes you don't want to, but when you do, I remember 
years ago, my pastor, now I wasn't even going to say this, but I just want to be saying what the Holy Spirit is leading me. I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. And we can miss it. We can. But when we don't, you're about this high knowing that he's having his way with you because you trust and obey. Years ago, my pastor, Jack Morgan, and his wife, Isla May, and we used to call her dude, Uncle, I, I never did. Uncle Ed. I called her mom. I guess what I call her brother. <laughs> and you know some I never heard you called, been called uncle. I like that. <laughs> I really like that. When I heard Pastor Andrew call you uncle, I thought, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I've, I've known Ed for, my goodness, 37 years. I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about what the Lord. On the street, the reason I wore this hat, my wife also prayed, don't be scatterbrained while you're up here. But well, after 37 years walking with the Lord, you got a lot you want to say. You see, I've seen a lot. Just right here in Rockford, Illinois. I can stand here until tomorrow and you can listen of miracles I've seen when Jesus healed and delivered and raised the dead right in Rockford, Illinois. We're serving a mighty God, a loving God, a big God that changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Mm. I've seen this as praise and worship. I spoke one thing. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, have a want to. Seek Him. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you. You can get in your car and all of a sudden you get filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but being filled with the Holy Ghost, you'd be praying in tongues. It's the spiritual language directly to the Heavenly Father. I just want to encourage you to study on why speaking in tongues. It's for many reasons. But the baptism of the Holy... I'm getting ahead of myself. I just want to flow with the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is power to be a witness unto Jesus in your Jerusalem, Judea, and in all the most part in Samaria. It's a reason to be filled with the Holy Ghost and be baptized. Go into the upper room. Just don't stay in there. You've got to come out of there. <laughs> That's Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Study that. I heard a man preach about that. A lot of people has a hard time getting people into the upper room. But some, a lot of people that gets up there don't want to come out of the upper room. There's a world out there that Jesus wants to move through, through his body. Now I'm getting ahead of my message here. Whew. Excuse me. I'm 71 years old. <laughs> 72. <laughs> I love that, brother. I tell you what, on the right side is the kingdom of light. We're talking about Jesus, okay? Oh, sorry about that. My wife said, don't act crazy now. I'm not Italian, I'm Swedish. And I talk with my hands. <laughs> Sam, you're right there. No, I'm, being, I'm being nice. Hey, do you cook lasagna? Uh, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm asking? So lasagna. No, just, I grew up with uh, my Aunt Sicilian from Sicily. Uh, well, I want to get back to Jesus here. <laughs> the light, the kingdom of light, the love of God in Christ Jesus. The kingdom of darkness is terrible, is ugly. For Jesus said, I, 
come to destroy the works of the devil. I got to hold on to this. Uh, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come to give life and life more abundantly. God's kind of life. He comes to give us eternal life. He had come to deliver us of the wiles of the devil, the enemy. Hmm. Kingdom of darkness has been spoken today. <laughs> all right, we all got a past. We all have a testimony. A testimony to be used which gives him the glory. Our testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we speak to people about Jesus, glorifies the King. Revelation 19.10 says, <clears throat> The testimony of the Lord Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. You're prophesying when you talk about Jesus. Yes. And I love to make the devil mad. Isaiah, I think, is 43 or 44. No, I ain't going to say what I was going to say. I, well, the, the devil, he's a, a liar. There can't be no truth coming out of him. But I, I'm not on the streets, so I can't be preaching like I preach on the streets. No, I, I don't preach sin. In sin, no. I just, um, it's different. It's to the loss. If there's anybody lost here, today is a day of salvation in this house. Every day is a day of salvation. To those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no other name given from heaven to this earth whereby man must be saved. It's a commandment of God Almighty that man, woman, child must be saved. Now I ain't even open up my notes yet. But young man, how old are you? Ten. I gotta uh, give a testimony which I was gonna give. So I'm doing according to what the Lord told me to do. And it was perfect timing today for this testimony for you to hear. When I was 16 years old, I wasn't gonna give my testimony like I'm doing now. But I just wanna flow. We all have a testimony. We all had a past, done things, and were forgiven in Christ Jesus. I was one ugly, mean, drunk at 16. My best friend, my sidekick buddy, him and I was drug dealers at 16 years old. Oh, the Holy Ghost is moving. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm different. We're all different. But I want to be obedient and say what he wants me to say. We all wasn't ugly and mean. I've heard Josiah's... I'm getting back to you, young man. The Lord won't let me go. This last month and a half, Josiah got up and preached, and he gave his testimony, which is so wonderful and powerful, that he grew up under the word of God in his house as a child. That's amazing to me. That's totally different than what I grew up in. See, we all grew up different in our life in life. And to me, that was amazing testimony, brother. And then Emmanuel, <laughs> the girl that's going to be here, or the late, our sister, oh, shit, I'm getting drunk. Testimonies sets me on fire because it glorifies our Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. 
in my message, we need to hear more testimonies in the world. Look what the Lord has done for me. He'll do it for you. And then she gave, the pastor said to her before she got up, give your testimony. And I'm back there, I'm, I'm wow. I, I've had this message before you all came and gave your testimony and your message. So that's how the Holy Spirit operates. It builds and builds. This is like you're saying. It builds and builds and builds. Because he's got a work to do in the, every one of our lives. And she gave her testimony. She grew up as a child under the word of God in her home. <laughs> and on the streets years ago, oh, Thanks, brother. <laughs> you know, I was going to bring my alarm clock today. I was going to set it for an hour. Because time flies so fast. <clears throat> and when you're teaching or preaching on the unction of the Holy Ghost like it was today, it was so powerful by the Holy Spirit. Out on the street, seven hours. Oh, my. But it's the Holy Spirit that gives you the strength. Just think of Jesus. Gene, I didn't forget about you. Holy Spirit, he said, the Holy Spirit is moving. Your testimony last week was so powerful to me. Josiah's. Emmanuel, yours, and you know what my message is about? Testimony. Your testimony. Every one of our testimonies is important to be used for the kingdom of God. Mm. God can use, if he can use me, <laughs> he can use anybody. If he can use what I used to be, what he has taken me out of, he can use me. It's not about us. It's him. It's all about him. But we're his body on, on this earth. Some are feet, hands, mouth, eyes. To be used for his glory. To touch people's lives. Somebody's came to us and shared Jesus with us somewhere in our life. And that's a seed that never returns void. They've got to accomplish it, what he has set it out to do, to save us. Every one of us. Because God's not willing that any should perish. So that encouraged me, Jean, my sister, that I know I was right on track and I didn't even get open up my book, my notes yet. Because I'm saying this to lift him up. When I was 16 years old, hallelujah, am I moving too much, brother? When I was 16 years old, I was in the world. I want to jump down to this. When I was nine years old, I quit going to church. I was confirmed, baptized in a Methodist church over on West State and Hinckley Street in 1950. And I brought Uncle Ed. We had a talk a little while ago. Uncle Ed was at the church where I got born again, August 17, 1986. He was there in 1983. So he was there when I got saved. And Chuck Spurgeon was an evangelist from Oklahoma. When my wife and I, my wife's name's Linda, I don't have time to tell the whole, there's so much to say of how God saved me. Well, when I walked in that church that day, 
Chuck Spurgeon, evangelist. He might have been a, a prophet. I don't know. He preached on the cross. Whew. There was a man at my work. I've been traveled. I, I ain't left you, young man. I, to, to building up this story for, I really believe the Lord wants me to give to you. Of a testimony of a young person. And it's not me. I traveled from Rockford to California, I lived there twice growing up because my oldest sister <clears throat> seen me going towards prison. So she reached out to try to save my life somewhat. A one-way ticket. Well, that didn't, didn't work. <clears throat> but from there to California, I've had people wherever I went and stopped. Handed out tracts. Tell me about the love of Jesus. Jesus loves you, young man. And I can't say what I say, and, and I don't want to hear it. <clears throat> and the reason why I didn't want to hear it, Ed, I looked up, I wrote down my testimonies years ago of my life, what was happening in my life, what things happened. And something stood out in me. Because, Ed, remember I said that Chuck Spurgeon, when he preached, that I gave my life that day because of the message of the cross? The Holy Ghost spoke to me after I talked to you, and he said, no, that ain't the way it happened. I said, yes, sir, tell me. I want to know the truth, how it happened. I want to get online of the truth. He says, you was being wooed to go to that church with your wife as uh, the Holy Spirit was wooing you to Jesus, because there was a man at my work that I seen how he was a witness. He never preached, never told me about Jesus. But I'm working on a machine looking at, and I knew he was a Christian, and I've heard other workers in the factory say, ah, oh, don't do it, he's a Jesus freak, he's, a, he's crazy, don't even talk to him. And I'm thinking to myself, he ain't done nothing wrong to nobody. He's only loving everybody. And I see Jesus in him. I didn't understand it at that moment. A man that was so forgiving. So there's something different about him. I want what he's got. I've had Baptists. I'm going to reach out here, brother. I've had Baptists, and I ain't talking bad about denominations. A Baptist brother in, in my at work stuck his finger and hit me at my around my nose. You're going to hell, boy, if you don't change. And my fist went, I was gonna knock him out. <laughs> ain't how you witness to somebody. <laughs> after Chuck Spurgeon preached. And when I got home, see, I didn't know how to receive Christ. I didn't know nothing about the Word of God. But I was being wooed listening, especially the cross and His love of what He did for me and us. And when I got home that day, I go, they had an altar call. Come on, I didn't go up. I want Jesus. I couldn't wait till the next Sunday to go back to that church. That's the working of the Holy Ghost in my life, in our life. And when I went back, I weighed 265 pounds. I was 6'3". And I was ready to receive Christ. I probably already received him, but I just didn't know it. My heart was ready. Wanting Jesus, this old wretched sinner. I can understand what Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy that he saved a wretched sinner like me. I can kind of feel in that class of the things I've been through and what I've done. 
and God still loves everybody. And I went to that church, that Family Christian Fellowship, the following week. I had a white, white shirt on with a pack of marbles. I was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. And you know and I know, come as you are. Come to Jesus as you are. He come not to condemn us. He come to save us, to change us, to fill us up with life. So when that altar call, Pastor Jack gave an altar call, and there was 400 to 500 people in that church that time. I was always ashamed of Jesus. I didn't want to hear about Jesus up to that, that time as the wooing of the Holy Ghost. And I want to hear more about this Jesus. But that day was my day of salvation. When he asked at the pulpit, if there's anybody that's never received Christ, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, the lover of your soul, he died for you. You know the message. He didn't stay dead. He's risen. He's alive, seated at the right hand of God. If you're ready to receive Christ, raise up your hand. My hand hit the ceiling, and I'm only 6'3". I ran down that aisle to receive my Savior, the life changer, the only Savior and life changer that this world's got is Jesus Christ. He knows all my sins, all our sins, has been washed by the blood of the Lamb at Calvary. I'm getting excited now. I'm getting excited. It's Jesus. Yes. The cross. At the cross. When Pastor Jack, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to ask Jesus to save me. I wasn't raised in church. <laughs> I didn't know the way to do it, but all I do was wanting them. And Pastor Jack says, and he's standing, he's pretty short, tall, you know, I'm tall, 6'3", and he's about like this. He says, he says, young man, remember this, Ed? You was there that day. Pastor Jack says, let's receive Christ. You want, you need, and he led me in prayer. Now remember, the old man, Jim, was ugly, was mean, could care less about anybody but himself. When I received him, I died to Jim. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. And when I received Christ, Jack was standing near the pastor, and the Bible says the love of God's been shed abroad upon your heart by the Holy Ghost. I didn't know this love. My dad never hugged me. He is a great father. Respectable man, an honest man. I had good parents. But they didn't bring Jesus to me. Now, if I can be here for three days, you want to say, I can tell you it lifts up Jesus of how he used me since then. When that love came into my heart, I put my arms around Pastor Jack, that little English man. Dude, his wife was an evangelist. Jack is anointing as a teacher and a preacher but mainly teacher. I picked him up, 265 pounds. I picked, and I had some big arms. I, I lost a lot in this old age. I picked him up and brought his face to my face. I didn't, I didn't plan it, just the Holy Ghost did it. I picked him up and looked at him, and I loved this man. I didn't know him only a week ago. 
I never say I love a man in my life. Except my father, you know, that birthed me. And I set him down like a gentle lamb. I didn't want to hurt him. That's Jesus changing the heart. Old stony heart he takes out, Ezekiel says, he puts in a new heart of, in the spirit. I got a new spirit and a new heart because of Jesus. You got a new spirit and a new heart because of Jesus. And when I set him down, dude, the wife said to me later, Jim, she just met me a week, you know, didn't know me. Jim, I want to tell you something. When you picked up Pastor Jack, his eyes got big as a silver dollar because he didn't know what she was going to do with him. I picked him. He was off his feet. <laughs> and I set him down like a lamb. That's what Jesus does. He puts his loving arms around us. He knows our hurts. He knows what we need. Brother, our hands in the hand of the man distills the water. We're in his hands. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I was 16 years old, young man. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got time. Now, if I get excited, I better, I better back up. When I give testimonies, I get, I get anointed. And what I mean by anointed, I get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Because I love it. I used to be drunk of what the world's got to offer. <laughs> Ain't got nothing to offer compared to the new wine. Jesus Christ himself. He's the anointed. Oh, my buddy. We did a lot of things together in the world. His mom and dad said to my buddy, I, ain't gonna, I don't want to mention names, okay? <laughs> he was sent his 12, I was 16, my buddy and I 16, he was 12 years old, his brother. And my dad was sent his brother to hang around us. And I said to my brother, my buddy, I said, does he have to come and hang around us all the time? You know, I'm kind of slowing us down in life here. I'm just a testimony. We did things that 12 year olds shouldn't see. You know, I mean, that's this world here. Yeah, he's driving my dad nuts. So they sent the little 12 year old brother to be with a 16-year-old. And 16-year-old is usually wild, I mean, if you're in the other world. We wasn't raised in church. We didn't know things of God. We were sinners. We're all the sinners. Let's get real. And finally, my sidekick went on vacation. Every Friday I would go to his house on Friday, we already had a plan to go do things. <clears throat> I was 16, and his younger brother, I can say his name because I talked to him last week. He's 68 years old now. And his, this testimony glorifies the king. When the Lord changes your life and you live for him, your life is so good. When he was seven years old, Gilly is his name, the 12-year-old, Gilly. And his brother's Morris. I'll get I asked for permission. He said, yeah, use my name. I went to is it Kiwanis Club where they teach Bible stuff for little children? Kiwana? Oh, Awana. 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 Awana, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate 
Oh. <laughs> he said, I just talked to him last week. He said, give me your story again, Gilly. I want to know the tr how it went about. He says, I went there, I got saved when I was seven years old. So seven to 12 is five years. He backslidden from the Lord. He didn't have spiritual growing up in this household. And so the world is my own. I ain't going to go there. But anyways, we all have, some people have bad lives, terrible lives. I'm off again. I move too much. <laughs> well, his brother Morris went on vacation. So I didn't go over his house for about three weeks. And I can see his house about a half a block from my house where I live. But then I heard his brother came back home three weeks later. So him and I had plans to go out on a Friday night again which we always did. <clears throat> and I told him before that, I said, don't bring your brother no more. I can't stand him. He's just driving me nuts. Whatever. So I went knocking on the door. <laughs> I got to move. I went knocking on his door for Morris and I to go out. And guess who opened up the door? 12-year-old Gilly. He had hair down to hair. I had hair down to there. We was all one of hippies, you know, goofy, whatever. Dope addicts, drug addicts, alcoholics, gangbangers. I, I, I tell you, there's, I don't want to glorify you. But we all have a testimony. I knocked on Morris's door, and here's, <laughs> the door opens up, here's Gary, uh, or, <laughs> what's his name, uh, Gilly, thank you, see, <laughs> uh, at least I can talk, <laughs> Gilly, he opened up the door, and I'm on the porch, there's a porch, he had a Bible on this, this arm, Reached out, grab my arm, brother, and tried to pull me in the house. I want to tell you about this man I just met. His name is Jesus, and he loves it. And I, and I fell off the porch. You get away from him. I don't want to hear about Jesus. But when I walked away from Gilly, and he was standing, come on, Jim, I want to, I want, I want to talk to you. I got convicted at 16 years old. He was like, he changed. His face changed. Not because of the haircut. He was lit up in his face. He was a downer. Now he's an upper in his face. His countenance was on this young man at 12 years old. Jesus changed him. And you know what happened to him? And this is for you, young man. I had this in my spirit so strong. You're young. And received the word that was spoken over to this family. It's coming to pass. Gilly, first thing he did he went to his school, his class, and won souls. And souls, he became a soul winner because he is such love with Jesus. And everybody's seen the change in him. What is it that you got? I'll tell you about Jesus. Then he bring them home and discipled all the ones that he won to Christ at 12 years old. God is no respecter of age. God can use anyone as long as you surrender to him to be used. Mm. But I never went back. I didn't want to hear about Jesus. 
I was going towards prison. I loved my son at that time. Huh. But I had a grandmother. I ain't even opened up my notes yet. <laughs> because to me, this is glorifying the king. This is why he came, Luke 19.10. He come to seek and to save the lost. We all human beings are lost without Jesus Christ. That's why he come to seek. Ain't you thankful that you've been found? Mm. So God can use you at your age. I believe as pastor by the Holy Ghost praying over this family. You're going to hear his voice. Yes. My children hears my voice. But it's by faith and a hunger and desire to hear it. You have to hunger and desire the things of God. Yes. Because <clears throat> Zig Ziglar said once, there's three kinds of people in the world. There's kind, one is they make things happen. And the other kind is they watch things happen. And the third kind is, what happened? <laughs> and it's how true it is. Daniel says in the book of Daniel, they who know their God will do exploits. Not by watching, they go out doing. They're being led by the Holy Ghost. I want to be led of the Holy Ghost. And another thing I've seen in my spirit is the praise and worship. There's someone in here with their left hand. It's either arthritis. Uh, I just want to say with the Holy, and I can miss it. But I've seen a left hand in my spirit. Jesus is the healer. And he hasn't changed. This hat. Now I'm going back to the beginning. Can I start? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> this hat belongs, and you can write it down on a piece of paper. And the reason I'm doing this, I, I'm being led of the Holy Ghost, and I talked to my wife about this. I says, honey, I says, is it all right if I wear this shirt? Well, for one thing, it says Jesus loves you. <laughs> uh, I'm not ashamed. But the reason I'm wearing it is because I want you to lift up laborers right here at Rockford Memorial, Rockford Memorial, Rockford, Illinois, at the city market and other places. This hat, <clears throat> Bill Erickson, is a preacher, street preacher. He gave this to me. It says, forgiven, 1 John 1, 9. And on the back it says, Jesus. What a wonderful name. And look at the color. Look at that. The blood. Nothing but the blood. What washes away our sin. The blood of Jesus. Our soon coming king. The one who died for us to take our place. For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. He made a way to rescue you and I and it's through his son, Jesus Christ. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No other way to the Father but through me. He didn't say I am a way or a truth or a life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And my dentist is a Catholic, wonderful man, loves Jesus. And he was going to work on my teeth one time. He said, oh, well, I got a question to ask you. And I wasn't playing on this, just popped in my spirit. <laughs> Here's testimony about Jesus again. I love it. <laughs> I'm 72 and I can dance. <laughs> I wanted in a chair, going to work on my tooth. 
And Dr. Charles said, my friend said, hey, I got a question to ask you. What about all those other people in the world that's never heard about Jesus and they serve other gods? And I said, well, you know what Jesus said? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No other way to the Father, the Creator, but through me. He is the door, the gateway into heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. And he looked at me. I says, Charles, that's why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. See? That's what the days of Pentecost was all about, Acts 1.8. To be baptized in the Holy Ghost with power, uh, doing power with dunamis power, to do miracle works as Jesus is doing. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bill Erickson, lift him up in prayer. He gets together with Pastor Justin Lopez every Friday and in other, uh, other groups that follows, does mighty works for Jesus Christ here in Rockford, Illinois. So I'm going to be obedient and because it's not about me, it's about Jesus. But we're supposed to be praying for one another. For the ministries that God has led people, anointed them to do. They need a hedge of protection uh, uh, under the unction of the Holy Ghost. So, <clears throat> Justin Lopez and Bill Erickson, lift them up in your prayers. Doing mighty works. Souls getting saved. People are being healed. Doing what Jesus said to do. This shirt, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Brother, can you read that? Because I can't read it. Free Bible, Rockford United in prayer, Jesus loves you. Amen. Thanks, brother. I met this man from Guatemala two years ago at the city market. Take that back three years ago. Man, time goes fast. My wife and I lived in Wisconsin when I came here. The Holy Spirit said, all right, now go to City Mark and start preaching. Bring Jesus. Let him out. Bring him to the world. Bring him to the City Mark. But first, he said, go to the bus station. I ain't lifting up Jim here. I'm telling you what Jesus is telling us what to do. It, it might be he wants you to go somewhere else in your world. as your mission field to be a witness. Carlos. Josiah, have you met Carlos? Okay. He's got a testimony from Guatemala. Speak English and speaks Guatemalan. <laughs> Spanish. He's got a ministry. He comes down to the city market every Friday. And he's got a big thing that he carries. He gives over, every Friday, 200 to 300 Bibles out free at the city market. Plus, he goes to other places in Rockford. And then once a month, he has a prayer for America. Uh, it's on uh, Morgan Street in uh, South Maine. I don't know if you know about that ministry down there. And he ministers there, and they have other ministers come, and they pray for the United States. They pray for the government, for the police. They pray against the violence that's going on in this generation in our life. A mighty ministry that God's using him. And God's opened up doors for Carlos that he never even dreamed of to be used for his glory in other ministries and traveling. That's how God works. And he is one humble person. Humble. Carlos. Every time I see him, I got to bend down because I don't want to hug him and put his head in my armpit. <laughs> That's not nice. So I get down to his level because he's short. You know what I'm saying? 
You know, we can have fun being a Christian. Come on now. <laughs> and then there's another man. His name is Lon. I don't know if you know of him. You know Lon? Praise God forevermore, I tell you. Out of the first city market I preached, he comes with his car and said, Hey, you! And he handed me the cross. I said, Well, thank you, sir. I didn't know who he was. And then he had to go home. He had to drive off. And it's the cross. It's the cross that he made. And he told me two weeks ago, he just made 22,000 of these. Sends them to Pakistan and other countries that's Muslims and that you know, people will get killed by having this cross. And he sends them, he's got a way to do it, an avenue that the Lord gave him. In India and Pakistan and other countries, <clears throat> it says the purpose of the cross is to remind us of the price that Jesus Christ paid with his death and that by his stripes we were healed. And by the shedding of his blood, our sins have been forgiven, and we are made whole. And then on the other side is John 3.16. For the cross man's story, click on the cold below to visit our website. So over Pakistan, he's been getting reports the countries that he's sending these crosses, and then he's got this other that you can put around your neck. Now, that's his ministry. He's a carpenter by trade. And he's got another young man. He owns a building in Rockford, or Lowe's Park, I think it is, that they make crosses, and it's got on here CWL, wherever that stands for, but... He said he pulls up on the internet of people's giving their lives, getting born again by receiving this. It's the message of Jesus Christ. And this is, people cannot just open wear this because they can get killed. But they fell in love with Jesus and getting saved. That's, that's the business of our Heavenly Father to save life. And I just want to share that <laughs> did I lose something here? <laughs> Can you hear me? Thanks, Brian. <laughs> I'm not you I'm a, I'm a street <laughs> I'm not used. Last time I preached in the in the church was three years ago in Wisconsin. And my message was let them out. <laughs> Pick that basket off and let the light shine. You know what I mean? Don't hide it. Don't let them out. We're all different. Our personalities are different. And you don't agree with that. Come on. <laughs> the way he looked at what? <laughs> now you know. We're all different, right, brother? <laughs> yeah. Every one of us. God wants to use every one of us to touch other people's lives. The Lord lives in us. Give our testimonies, your testimony, to other people. It's so powerful. As Pastor Andrew said last week, that uh, our testimony is powerful. And on that table up there, I put on there, and I'm going to, I feel like winding down a little bit. I didn't get to my message, you know, and I'm okay with that. I really am. Because I really believe I, talking about Jesus here, I can't miss. I can't miss when you talk about Jesus. See? But I want to be used mightily. For others to be touched, to get saved, to get delivered. I've seen blind eyes open right here in Rockford, Illinois. And I want to take as many as you want, okay? 
These are free from, uh, I've been for five years, World Missionary Press is in New Paris. El is, uh, the address is on the back you can get a hold of. Um, this one here is my favorite, Help from Above. Oh, my goodness. It's in my message that, oh, my goodness, talk about him going into the mountains looking for that lost sheep. Left the 99 in the back and went to look for that lost sheep. Mm. You ever you ever hike through mountains? Anybody here ever hiked? I've hiked through a lot of mountains in Arizona, and it's dangerous. There's mountain lions, rattlesnakes, all kind. Of, if you way up there and you get hurt, <laughs> you better have a cell phone that works. But there might not be no service. I'm just saying. Look what Jesus did for us to seek the lost. It's called work and labor for soul winning. But I, I, and my message is, this is help from above, take as many as you want. The way to God is good for the family and children. It shows you how to be led, how to receive Christ, how to pray to receive him. It's a, this is all God's word that's in the Bible. And it's got teachings of anything you can think of in these little booklets. And not only this, a double pleasure, double reason, and the amazing life of Jesus Christ. I got a book, uh, I don't know how many hundreds I got out there. Take as many as you want, okay? <clears throat> And who am I that a king would die in my place? Who am I that a king would die in our place? He did that for us. We should have died on that cross. We're the sinners. He never sinned. He was a lamb without sin. A spotless lamb. And he took our place. He went to hell that you and I can go to heaven. He didn't stay there. God raised him from the dead the third day, seated at the right hand of God, interceding. And I love that verse in Hebrews 7.25. He comes to save to the uttermost. If I had time to tell you, but not to glorify the devil in any fashion or way, to let you know how big love God is for sinners. You cannot get bad enough that he won't save anybody. Because his amazing grace and loving kindness is towards every human being. I went to a man's Bible study in Belvedere years ago named John. Seated, and we started talking, there were about 40, 50 of us just sharing Jesus. And he was from Chicago. I'm backing up because I'm starting to spit. <laughs> Larry McMahon. Remember him, Ed? He discipled me. I drive 20 miles. I lived in Loves Park twice a week to be discipled under the Word of God. We're called to be disciple makers, to make disciple people. If you save one, disciple them. And I love discipling people. Mm. So I was being discipled by Larry, loving it. Just a baby in Christ didn't know hardly any word other than I love Jesus, what he did for me. Then he brought me to the Bible study, and this man, John, said, and Larry on the way home said, hey, did John give you his testimony? He said, no, we didn't have time for it. But I said, man, I, I've never seen a man so gentle and so peaceful. And, you know, the calmness of this man was, you know, just the love of Jesus in him. He said, well, I just want to tell you a little bit about John. He was a mafia hitman. 
for years in Chicago, killed people. But Jesus died for him, for every human being. And a man in Chicago went up to John and gave him a track about Jesus Christ. He went home. This is how powerful a track is. Because it's the word of God that's on the message about Jesus on the track. He read it and fell on his knees and repented and asked Jesus in his heart. And God changed him. This is what it's all about. Being used for others to have what we have. Now I want to preach. Now I'm going to get a wild man. I already got permission from the pastor. I can run around this. I can run around. It's lifting up Jesus. Yes. yes. Being used for others. I was ugly when I was in the kingdom of darkness. And here comes the kingdom of light. Jesus Christ into my life. We love everybody. Can I have a little bit more time, brother? I prayed, didn't I? At the beginning? Hallelujah. <laughs> Colossians 1, 13, 14 says, Thank you, Father, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and transformed or conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Mm. I was going to do a confession, but I'll just read it to you. Love. Mm. Say this out loud, we'll do it. I am who the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. I was born to win. I was born to triumph. I was born to reign with Christ. And I'm reigning with Him. I already won. I'm triumphing in Christ. The devil can't win. And I can't lose. Because the Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel, to cast out devils, to heal the sick in His name, by His authority, by His ability. He who unites Himself with the Lord is one spirit with Him. I'm one with the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. I have peace of God which passes all understanding. The love of God has been shed abroad upon my heart in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mm. It's good to have a confession. And also, confessing the Word of God in your spirit. I, I, I can stand here all day and all night. Because, you know, you get more in and you want to give it out. You don't, want to, you don't want to be stingy. You don't want to hoard it to yourself. You want to give it away. Freely receive, freely give, right? 
And then on that table back there is a box, or this on that table, I want you to take one of each. There's three different things there, okay? This one is a teaching, Will You Testify About Jesus? And this is by, I don't know if you ever heard of Andrew Murray. Yeah. Okay, I, I uh, studied a lot of his books. And it tells you how to be a witness. I just want, I'm here to be encouragement to every one of us. How to be a witness. How to do it. It's like Smith Wigglesworth said one day. When you go and testify of your king to, to the lost, your knees might shake for nervous because you've never done it. You know, you can... Say you never, I've been there. I've never done that before until I did it. It's like jumping in the water and get your feet wet. And then watch out. The Holy Ghost going to get you. And it's good. How you doing, young man? I just want to share this with you. And you might be, <laughs> and you might look at me, well, why is he nervous if this is supposed to be good? You know? But And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit start talking through you. Sir, I just want to share. My name's Jim. What's your name? John? What a wonderful name. What a wonderful name, John. I tell you. Now, back then, I, man, you look like Jesus. You can be funny, but the Holy Spirit will give you things to say. And you'll go, when you go walk away, you go, oh, that wasn't me talking. It's the Holy Spirit in His people, His children. God's children will give you words how to minister to people, to receive Christ. I want you to receive and take, take one or two or three, whatever, because I think there's 60 some that I, anyway, I want to give this to you as a help for every one of us. No matter how old you are, or where you're at with Jesus. How to share Jesus. It's a help. You can do it. But the Bible says I can do all things through Christ Jesus. See, it's by faith. Receive it in your spirit. And be a doer of the word. See? And then you'll be blessed. They will be blessed. You're a co-laborer with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The biggest firm this earth has ever had or will ever have is God Almighty, His Son Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit that will bring that word down into people's hearts is a list of Jesus. And this other teachings, the power of your story. This is what Pastor Andrew said last week. And I about almost jumped out of my chair. It's in my message. And I'm going, Lord, this is right. Maybe you'll let me do it again. And I won't, because uh, I wanted to do this. Is how to. This is by, I'm sure you've heard of Charles Spurgeon. The Prince of Pre uh, Preachers in England back in the uh, 1800s. And you know, a lot of churches that don't know about these two men and their pastors or denominations, whatever denominations, God used these two men, and don't, we don't lift up men, we lift up Jesus and every human being. Because that's their calling, that's their ministry, using for Jesus and God Almighty on this earth to save souls, to help and deliver people. <clears throat> I said this to this man in Wisconsin, a pastor. He was talking about Charles Spurgeon. I said, do you know that Charles Spurgeon was used mightily in the healing ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ? No, I never heard of that. I said, he would go and visit the sick and just pray. Instantly, the Lord would raise them up and heal them. Because he was a mighty man of prayer. He used mightily to preach the gospel. Hmm. When can a person's personal story? 
Even a simple one be a powerful influence for God. Now this is so simple and so powerful of your testimony, of our testimony, every one of us. God puts people in our pathway that our testimony will bring closer to Jesus Christ. That God would use our testimony for them to get saved. If God has done it for us, for you and I, he'll do it for them. What great things has God done in your life? That's the question. Where might you find opportunities to tell your faith stories? So I wanted you to receive, grab them. If you know somebody that needs, it can help, it'll help anybody to receive it and do it. And I got this years ago. <clears throat> Talking about faith. Never quit. Don't ever give up. Take one of these two. I take more than, you know, I don't know, I think I got 30 of these yesterday. <clears throat> and I used to have it on my refrigerator. Never give up about the things of God in your life. Faith. Is the only thing that pleases our Father. Smith Wigglesworth said, God will move over thousands of people to one who is walking in faith. And the other ain't. And meet him. It's faith that moves God. Faith that moves mountains in our life. And I want to encourage, and I'm going to let this go. Hallelujah. If you have to leave, don't just leave. <laughs> if you have to, there's nothing holding. <clears throat> August 17, 1986 is when I got born again. And I went and got disciples getting discipled. The first thing I did when I left the church was went to the streets. The first week when I got saved, I fell in love with Jesus, like you all fell in love with Jesus. And I opened up Luke 4. I never had a Bible. Never had a Bible. And when I got saved, my wife went to Kmart and bought one of those cheap Kmart Bibles. I was so blessed. It had red letters in it. And that's all I read was red letters because I wanted to know about my Jesus, what he has done for me. I wanted to know, I want to see him. Because the Bible says what he said, if you want to see the Father, look at me. If you want to hear the Father, listen to me. He is a, a resemblance, a perfect resemblance of God Almighty, the Father. If you want to know God, look at Jesus. Follow him. So I read the letter, the red, and I got a track of my testimony. I was once lost, but now I'm found. <laughs> what better testimony can you have than that? Of being born again, getting saved, becoming a child of God. But as many who has received him, that's Jesus Christ. God has given them the power to become a child of God. We're God's children. Uh -huh. My wife had hers done. Blue is for boy, pink is for girl. <laughs> and I can't read this, I'll cry. Her testimony makes me cry today. We've been married 42 years because of God's mercy and God's working, of God's goodness that kept my marriage together. I was a bonehead, a knucklehead. Even after I got saved, I, had, I was a baby. I had to grow. I mean, I got changed. But I still had to work on something. <laughs> I'm a child, a knucklehead child. I was in the devil's camp before I met Jesus. 
I had demons. My first wife, I've been married twice. She was a Catholic. Charismatic in 1970s. And she got born again with her friends. They were born again. And she conned me into seeing uh, Crossing the Switchblade movie in this church, trying to get me into church. Oh, my goodness. And I got conned to going in, and I went. And Pat Boone in his white shoes was a preacher. And Nikki Cruz, you know the story, the movie, true story. I can tell you stories about Nikki Cruz, live stories that, that I know. And, and I got home, and she started talking to me about getting saved, and she tried two or three times and getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, you can't get filled with the Holy Ghost if you ain't saved. <laughs> if you don't know Jesus, you ain't going to be baptized. And I, now I'm just going to be out open because you're listening. Wherever this goes, I'm probably like a lamb compared to people, other people. I told my first wife, I'll kill you if you mention Jesus in my house. I was ugly, mean. She never mentioned Jesus in nine years of marriage because of that one thing. And I met it at that time. I was lost. But Jesus still loved me. My second wife, my wife now, Linda. Before I got saved, she used to pray to the Lord at night that God would kill me. She would have a knife under her pillow, not knowing what this drug's going to be like when he comes home. There's some mean people, and I was one of them, in and out of jails, going towards prison. Yeah. I'm done with me on that. I, I was ugly. Now I love you because of Jesus. You, you put your knives, she, she put her knives in the drawers. They don't belong. She don't have them on her pillow because of Jesus. Had been. I had been ugly. Well, I could be ugly too. No, wait a minute. But I tell you, Jesus changes us. Changes our life. She don't have knives on her. She prays for me and would love, would love one another. And forgive one another. And she's still my wife. Five minutes? Maybe ten? No, I, I'm just brother. <clears throat> no, I want to be. I want to be. Uh, I'd be here all day talking about Jesus, and you can too. Everyone in this house can stand here and do what I'm doing. Really, just tell your story in the love of Jesus and what He has done for you. Healings, deliverance, protection. I got stories just on my wife and I alone. I've been healed many times and delivered and protected. I got stories to say that you won't even believe. That's how big God is. The first week I was saved, I opened up Luke and I read Luke 14. And guess what happened? I didn't know this happens. I'm just a baby in Christ, a week old baby. And I read because I'm eating the word. That's all I read. That's all I want to read. I don't care about the I don't want nothing but the red. Nothing but the red. And Jesus sent out his servants to go into the streets and bring him in. God wants his house full. This house ain't our house. This belongs to God. He wants his house full. He wants his kingdom full of his creation of every human being to get saved and to serve him and to worship him and to live for him. 
And I read that, and that word street, now the letter, now I'm just telling you, God knows this, and I know this, and I, uh, why lie about something? Why bring it up wrong? But I'm just telling you what I happened to me. I'm reading this, and the red letter street came off that page in capital letters about that big in yellow. It was like a neon sign went off. Street! And the Holy Ghost led me to the streets. That's how I got into my ministry. I was gold. And I wanted to tell every human being about Jesus. I wanted to I ended up being like Gilly. <laughs> I did. Because of Jesus. And he's still a soul winner today, 68 years old. And then I laid my head the following week. I'm just telling you like it is. Now, it's, God's no respecter. He don't love anybody more than anybody else. He loves everybody the same. He just uses people differently, and he brings things differently. The thing is, he knows a hunger heart. He wants our hearts to be so set on fire for him that no matter what he brings to your table of your heart in your life, you'll surrender. As dude said to me one time, pastor's wife had a word for me. He says, trust and obey, for there's no other way. And when you trust and obey, he will show you the way. First, we trust and obey. And then he moves us to show himself big to the world. We're just vessels, instruments of him to use us for his glory. I laid my head on my pillow a week after I got the street coming off the page. My wife was in the bathroom getting ready to go to bed. I, I, beat the, I beat in bed first. I was tired. And as soon as my head hit that pillow, boom! A horn went off on the inside of me. A trumpet blew. And I, as soon as I hit, as soon as it went off so loud, I jumped out of bed. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? And she looked at me like, I know you're crazy. I didn't hear a thing. I know my call. Blow the trumpet, the gospel trumpet. That's how God was coming to me. I ain't lifting up Jim here. You have, you have the unction of the Holy Ghost in every one of us. Testimonies are powerful for the king. I'm going to... I don't, know, I don't want to stop because there's so many so good about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. I got two more. Can I? More. My grandmother and my grandfather. My grandma was born in 1896 or 1898. And this is about my grandmother and her mother. Oh, I don't know what year she was born. <laughs> In 1912 or 1910, my grandmother was 12 years old. Mm. I'm old now. I get excited. Back then, people didn't have money. They didn't have much money. The grandmother got gangrene in her right leg. They didn't have money to go to a doctor, and it turned black. It died, her right leg, from her toe up to here, or here, I think. <clears throat> so they called the doctor. They had Dr. Welby's back then. Remember Dr. Welby's show? He would come with his little Dr. Reed. I had that Dr. Bolotov here in Rockford, Illinois. 
in the 1950s to come to our house. The doctor would work on us in our house. So here comes the doctor to see my grandmother's mother. Now this would probably be a little gross, but it's life. <clears throat> and he looked at her leg, and it was dead. There was no life in it, and it will never come back because he didn't know Jesus, okay? <clears throat> she loved Jesus before 12. She gave her heart to the Lord Jesus, went to church, loved Jesus. But there's churches that don't believe in the whole council, don't believe in the whole gospel, don't believe in healings that have passed away in the days of, of the apostles. The book of Acts, we're in Acts 29. Good God's word does not change because he does not change. And he, the doctor said to my grandmother, get the stuff off the table in the kitchen. We're going to put the grandmother on top of the kitchen table. So she did. You hold her at the, at the head and her shoulders. And he got his briefcase out with a handsaw. Cut her leg off right in front. And my grandmother had to hold her mother down. This is true stories. But this is amazing. Uh, that hardship of human lives that goes through. That built my grandmother's face so strong. She had to be a mother to her younger brother. And, now, and help the father. He had to work. Because you got to pay bills. So at 12 years old, she didn't know how to grow up in a natural as a woman because she had so much responsibility. That's hard to go through something like that. I don't know if man, a lot of people could do that today. That's, re that's what they did in the Civil War, you know. <clears throat> and she died a month later. My great grandma. But when I was a little child, and I'm saying this to glorify Jesus, my grandmother grew her faith was so strong in the Lord. She was the most gentle, and I'm not lifting her up because she's my grandmother. I'm a little, I was a troubled child, very troubled. Always in <laughs> getting in trouble. You know, I, I was very rebellious. Excuse me, brother. But I'd go to my grandparents' house on the weekends, and I loved it. <clears throat> Her bedroom was downstairs, my grandfather was upstairs. When you and my brother and my sister, we argue. You know, how kids are kids, you know. They're naughty. They do things. They don't mean to, but they're just not, you know, they do things that they shouldn't do. Yell or whatever, whatever. When my grandmother walked in the room, you can hear a pin hit the... It wasn't because she was in the room. It was because she brought the presence of God in that room. Peace. Now, I ain't, I ain't lifting her up. I'm just saying that... Something happened in the, in the atmosphere of joy and peace was in this lady. I didn't know nothing about Jesus, but I knew something different about my grandmother. My other grandmother was different. <laughs> I got a lot of knots in my head. <laughs> but this grandmother, when you're naughty, you change. She started teaching me Swedish when I was little. I couldn't talk English. Uh, I can go, there's stories in my life of what Jesus can do and what he can change. Can you understand me talking English now? Because of Jesus. I had to go to class for I don't know how many years to learn how to talk. And I fought a lot because people made fun of me. Oh, you know, retard. <laughs> I mean, that, that's my story. But my grandmother, she was a praying woman. 
when I get out of bed, we had a room, another room, where I get out of bed, and her bedroom's here, and I walk by, and I see her sitting on her bed straight up, talking to somebody. And I was five, six years old. I thought, is my grandmother nuts? She talking to somebody that ain't in there? What's she doing talking to herself? She's talking to Jesus. And one day she said, come in here, Jimmy, and sit down. And she shared Jesus with me. She said, son, he loves you so much. He's got a plan for you. And I'm praying for you every day. I'm here because I believe in my grandmother's prayers. God listens to the prayers of his people, answers them those who are in faith. I'm alive because I believe her prayers. But my grandfather was upstairs and he was an alcoholic. Years in their marriage, years ago, down in the barn. And she walked into the barn with a double barrel shotgun and pointed at him. She says, I'm gonna tell you, Martin, if you get drunk one more time, I ain't gonna divorce you, I'm gonna kill you. And she meant it. She knew Jesus. She got so sick of it. He never got drunk that, since that day. But he had two glasses of whiskey a day. He never got drunk. A glass to go to bed and a glass in the morning to get up. And guess who got to pour the glass? I love cowboy movies. And I always, the, how the devil works in my mind. You ain't a true man if you don't get drunk. <laughs> and I became a drunk. But I would run upstairs. Papa, get up. On his night table, he'd have a pint of whiskey. And a glass, uh, what do you call those little glasses? Shot glass. Can I pour you a glass, Papa? Yeah, go ahead, pour it. I thought it was so good. I ain't blaming him for me being a drunk. But I just want to write, get the testimony. Your testimony is powerful. You can get your own track made up. It's not cheap. But it's your story. That God will use I was passing out my my story, my my track. My mission field at first was on Eleventh Street. And Harrison Avenue was a gas station <clears throat> at that time. And the guy that ran the gas station, Brother Joe, Catholic, and him and I just got along so good. And he said, Jim, this parking lot here is going to preach to him, bring Jesus to people. And he was Catholic. And uh, so he gave me his parking lot, my mission field. God blessed me that way because I was obedient. And I was you know, across the street, and I'm going to shut down on this. Across the street, now I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about Jesus here. He uses people, his people, his children. When I was handing out tracts, my testimony, and on my, it put your, your phone number on the back to a barber across the street at that time. Name, I think his name's Larry, I think. It's been since 1986, a long time. And I got a phone call one day. I was at home. He says, Jim, this is Larry, the barber. Yeah. He says, I have a friend that I've known for years, and he's in trouble, Jim. Would you go to, he's at the bar down the street on 7th, and I love going into bars, if I'm sent. I'll go. Because I lived in them. I got so many stories. 
He says, would you go and visit him? He's in trouble. He needs help. Bring Jesus to him, will you? I said, I sure will. Man, I got my shoes on and I was gone out of that, that bar. I walked in the bar and it was packed of people. And it had one of those long bars, you know, where you order your drinks and whatever. And there was quite a few people. And I said, before I went there, I said, well, what does he look like? Because I don't know. I never, I don't know. He said, he's about this tall and he looks like this and whatever. So I spotted him and I walked right up to him. I said, you so-and-so? He says, yeah, that's me. And he went, he went to get a drink. Half of his fingers were chewed off. Blood. Half open blood sores. He's eating his thing and fingers. And I says, sir, whatever his name, I don't remember. I says, can we go outside? I want to get him out of that atmosphere for I can talk to him and minister Jesus to him. So he says, yeah, I'll go. And I says, I, I came to say his name, Larry Barber sent me. He's your friend. Oh, I know Larry. So I go out in the parking lot. And I start ministering Jesus to him. And you know, I heard a voice. This was only a month after I got saved. I just read Mark chapter 16. Signs will follow the believer in his name and they will do these things. John chapter 14, 12. And I ain't lifting, I'm lifting up Jesus because that's what we're called to do. Do what he did. Those who knows him and has the word and the power hmm, of who Jesus is. And I heard a voice. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. Cast the demon out of him. That's the first time I ever heard that. But I've read Mark 16. I say, you want to be set free? Yes. I know who can set you free. He set me free. His name is Jesus. You want to be set free? Yes. But he gave me his story. His wife left him, took their three children away from him. He lost his job, lost his house because he was a drunk. He got so messed up. So he got demons. He wasn't willing to give up until I brought Jesus to him. He said, I want to be set free. I just did what the Holy Ghost said. I can't do nothing. It's Jesus that does the work. Come out, you foul demon, in the name of Jesus. And his countenance changed. The demon left. And I got his address. I said, we're going to keep in contact. <sighs> And guess what Jesus did? He not only delivered them and set him free, he brought his wife back and children back. The following week, he got his job back. The bank turned around and gave the house back to him. God restored everything that the devil stole. That's what Jesus does. But God is waiting for us to let him out into our world. Know him and be used by him. Brother, I, I appreciate you. Let, let me stand here. I didn't even get to my message. Give me a hug, brother. I'm sorry it took so long. I'm sorry it took so long, brother. How many were blessed? Amen. We're not worried about the time, are we? Oh, hallelujah. We were blessed in the Lord. So, Brother Jim, I'm going to ask you to come back in the pulpit again and deliver the word that God gave you. This was the warm up. It's a warm up. <laughs> I don't have to do it. Okay, good. This is the warm up, brother. So, as you were speaking, the Lord was just reminding me.
know, the Lord says we're an apostolic church. And the Lord reminded me that the Great Commission is an apostolic call. Mm -hmm. So let's wrap up with this. Matthew chapter 28. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read verses 16 through 20. Yeah. And this is the uh, apostolic mandate that the Lord has given us that we call the Great Commission. Amen. And how many know this is for each and every one of us? And the Word of God says this. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where the Lord Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, Amen, brother. even to the end of the age. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many have been blessed Amen. in the Lord today? Mm -hmm. What a beautiful day in mm -hmm. him. All the ghosts. Jim, thank you for speaking. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Thank you, sir. We love you. Thank you, sir. We love you. Thank you. And I want to remind everybody that on the back table, so in the foyer area, there's a box mm -hmm. that has the tracks in them. And we want to encourage everybody to grab some on the way out, yes, as well yes. as the handouts that Jim was talking about. Yes. Sound good, guys? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. As we wrap up, I want to remind everybody that we have uh, Scott and Karen's 50th anniversary party um, that we're going to be going to. It's up pretty quick. Um, it is around the corner at Nunzios. Um, and they're asking us to be there at 2.45, a half hour. So I want to encourage you to go. Even if you didn't have a chance to sign up, you're welcome to go. And we're just going to fellowship together. They're providing food for us. Oh, and it's going to be a wonderful time in the Lord. And we're going to celebrate their 50th. Amen, Lord. And how they know that in the Hebrew, 50 is the year of Jubilee. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. So we're going to mm. celebrate this jubilee moment with them in the Lord. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to pray and we're going to close the service. And then I'm going to ask our resident Levi, Brother John, to pray the blessing for us. And then everybody's going to be dismissed. Again, we encourage